What's going on guys, Digidestin here, back again with another pickup video for you. Uh, this one is fantastic, this one's a little special. Uh, this one is the Portland Retro Gaming Expo Purge uh, edition of pickup videos. So this past year, or this year, was my first year at Portland Retro Gaming Expo uh, 2017, and it was fantastic. It was October 20th through the 22nd, uh, I was there all weekend, and I had a blast. It was one of the biggest... Portland Retro Gaming Expos they've had. It's one of the biggest retro gaming conventions that we have on the West Coast. And uh, it was my first time attending and I was I was blown away. It was all thanks to uh, my buddy Castlemania Games. Uh, he has a great site for all the, the retro gamers, all the modern gamers, all the modern retro gamers. Uh, you know, if you need gaming accessories, if you need repro items, if you need uh, cleaning kits and all that stuff, you need to check out his site. I'll leave a link in the description below. But thanks to him, I was able to attend. Uh, he was a vendor there. He had some extra vending space, some table space, and offered that space to me. So I had the opportunity to take some of my extras down, some of my duplicates, put them out, uh, sell off some extras, hook up some collectors and gamers, uh, give them good deals, and meet tons of great people. So thank you again, Castlemania Games. Uh, it was a really great weekend. Uh, and I don't know, it's, it was just a blast. So in this video, it's going to be a little bit of a recap of my experience at Portland Retro Gaming Expo. Uh, it was a lot of fun, you know, there was tons of vendors there. Um, I drove down and so me and my fiance uh, had a bit of a road trip, which is a lot of fun. We took a few detours on the way, picked up a few things. And, uh, you know, when we got there, uh, even though we were tired, we still had tons of energy. We we're still looking forward to the weekend and uh, meeting all the different vendors and, and different gamers alike. So the first thing about Portland Retro Game Expo I want to talk about is just the sheer volume. It is huge. It's overwhelming. There's so many people there. Um, you know, we didn't have very much space in terms of, you know, putting our stuff out to, to vend. Uh, but that was fine. You know, we had a, a great location right by the entrance and tons of people came by and stopped by and got some stuff from us. And I got rid of most of, most of my stuff, almost, you know, almost all of it, which is great. Um, but it was really overwhelming as to how many people were actually there uh, all the aisles were filled there was you know a huge vendor space there was an arcade um, there was tons of vendors with great things like there was I saw a vendor with like all the different not for resale carts for Super Nintendo uh, you know all the heavy hitters for Super Nintendo there's Super Bonk uh, there was you know Star Fox Super Weekend there was Hagane a complete box Hagane um, you know just a bunch of crazy titles Snow Bros Fire and Ice uh, multiple copies of DuckTales 2, Chippendale Rescue Rangers 2, Little Samson. There were even multiple copies of stadium events. There was like four or five copies of stadium events, which is ridiculous. But this expo was super fun. You know, so many different people came to visit. Um, even some of my viewers, which is great. You know, I, I never expected to come across some viewers. Uh, but, you know, I'm always open to, to meeting my fans, if, you know, if I can call them that. And, uh... Yeah, it was just a lot of fun meeting new people. So during the expo, I didn't really have a lot of time to go out and explore and, and look at all the vendors or even play in the arcade, go to the panels. I know Castlemania Games had a panel with John Riggs on a, a live open cart surgery, which was pretty cool. But I didn't have a lot of time to do that because I was vending. It was crazy busy um, and I didn't have a lot of time to just step out and look around because it, it was just me and my fiance there handling our stuff and we didn't want to you know, lose out on any deals or, or meeting anybody uh, that did want to meet us. So in terms of pickups, uh, they're pretty minimal, but I'm pretty satisfied with what I found. Um, I'm super happy coming back with what I did, and I'm going to show you that now. So the very first thing I want to show you is actually something we picked up on the way down to Portland. Uh, it's not a game per se. It's something from FYE, which is for your entertainment. It's a, a media store that has collectibles, CDs, DVDs, box sets of DVDs, movies, and all that cool stuff. But they did have a limited edition release of a serial, uh, which is actually pretty near and dear to my heart. Uh, I used to watch a lot of Rugrats growing up, and I was a really big fan of it. You know, I watched it every morning before school, and they released something that was very cool and just right up my alley. It is Reptar cereal. This is a cereal based on Reptar, which is a dinosaur or mascot in the Rugrats series. And they have Reptar cereal in the show. Um, they decided to release a box of it 
from what I've heard, it's just like Fruit Loops. I don't know. I haven't tried it yet. Um, maybe I'll open it up and try it. We'll see. Um, but they're also doing Reptar bars. And I have those on pre-order. Reptar bars have not come in yet. But, you know, once they do, I'll pick them up and I'll show you guys. But this one was the first thing that we picked up on our trip down to Portland. We made two stops on our way down to Portland. Uh, this is our second one. We actually found a deal on Craigslist. Uh, the day before leaving and we were able to organize a time to meet up with this guy he was about a couple hours from us but somehow it worked out for an N64 bundle um, I was only interested in one game so I ended up selling up the, the extras you know at, at Portland Retro Gaming Expo which helped us um, but this was the the item that I was really looking at in terms of you know that Craigslist bundle and that is Le Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask the not for resale see if I can get it to focus there um, but it is not for resale which means it is a demo cart um, it's pretty cool you don't come across it too often and uh, it was amongst maybe 12 other N64 games like F-Zero, Super Mario Bros, um, you know some sports titles, uh, 1080 but either way this was the gem of the bundle um, I met up with the guy real quick transaction real nice dude and uh, we were able to come home with this Alright, the next few pickups are actually from the expo itself. Uh, so as a vendor, you get there early, you get set up, you gotta you know, get things all ready for the, the coming days. And so we did have some time before the expo actually started, before the general attendees were able to you know, uh, come in and, and browse. But we were able to find time before that to walk around, uh, check out some of the other vendors, and possibly make some purchases. And so that's what we did. Uh, the first thing I want to show you is a game that was actually on my list uh, of things to look for while down there. It is Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2. This one's very cool. I'm on a quest to find Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1, 2, and 3 for N64. I have 1, and this one makes 2, and I'm hoping to find 3 pretty soon. And the reason I want 3 mostly is because uh, it is the last published N64 title uh, in the US for the N64. So it's pretty cool. I enjoyed the Tony Hawk series. And uh, it's very, it's even cooler that Tony Hawk 3 was the last one published for the N64. All right, these next few games are kind of, uh, it wasn't on my radar, you know, not not in my initial priority of games to find, but it was, was cool to find them because I had been looking for them. The first one is uh, Super Princess Peach for Nintendo DS, and this is one of the first DS games that I ever played uh, when I picked up a Nintendo DS, uh, and it's super fun. It's kind of unrated. Underrated, I mean, uh, you play as, you know, Princess Peach uh, on, a, on a quest to save Mario from the Hammer Bros. Uh, it's action platformer. It's super fun. Uh, I picked this up from Super Smash Games panel, or not panel, a booth. Um, they're located in Tacoma, Washington. I know, fairly close to me, but I, it's a little bit far, you know, to make the trip on, on a daily basis. Um, but since we were all there, I was able to stop by their booth, find this, and pick this up, which is great. The next game is also another DS game. It is the Game & Watch Collection 2 on Nintendo DS. And this is a Club Nintendo exclusive. And this one's cool because when I was at my booth, I had a bunch of different different games you know, across all different systems. And uh, you know, I had a few people approach me for trades, which, which didn't happen too often. But one guy came up and was looking for, uh, I think it was Wu-Tang Shaolin style for PlayStation. Uh, I had it priced, he didn't have the cash on him right away, and he asked me to save it for him, so I did. And he came back and was like, hey, are you taking trades? And I was like, sure, it depends on what you have, and it uh, depends on what you want. But he was looking for Wu-Tang Shaolin so uh, style. And so uh, he brought out a tub of games, he pulled this one out, and immediately caught my eye. This is one of the, the rewards on Club Nintendo when it, you know, when it was existing. Um, that I missed you know there's one more that I didn't get but this one uh, I have been looking for you know getting the collection game and watch collection completed and uh, he was he was cool enough to do a trade with me for you know that that PlayStation game for this game so very cool uh, it was one of my first trades at Portland Retro Game Expo and I'm really satisfied with it all right and we have another trade uh, it's a good buddy of mine uh, he used to live around my area but he ended up moving away for family reasons um, but it's always a pleasure to be able to trade with him. You know, I've worked out some some mail trades, but uh, it's been a while since we've done one in person. And he actually brought a game for me that I've been looking for. Uh, and coincidentally, this is the first game that I traded him to begin with, and I've regretted it ever since. 
Uh, but he found an extra copy, brought it to me. Uh, he traveled a long way to do it, so I really appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, you know who you are. And uh, I was able to work out a trade for him. Uh, it's Rainbow Islands on the Nintendo Entertainment System. Uh, it's a little dirty, but it's not a big deal. I've yet to clean it yet. And this is kind of a, a spin-off on the Bubble Bobble series. So you have this game, you have Parasol Stars, you have Bubble Bobble, Bubble Bobble 2. And I'm hoping to get the complete set, you know, with the exception of Bubble Bobble 2. I don't know if I'm going to find that for a reasonable price. Um, but this one's fairly cheap. So, you know, being able to work out a trade for this was fantastic. I believe I traded him Super Return of the Jedi on Game Boy Complete in Box, as well as the Not For Resale copy of Virtual Fighter Remix on Sega Saturn. So it was pretty, pretty solid trade. Um, but, you know, it's always, it was more of a pleasure to, to see my buddy again after such a long time and, uh, and doing the trade in person. So that was a lot of fun doing this one here. Alright, just a cool thing I want to show you real quick. It's my uh, exhibitor badge. It's uh, based off of uh, an Atari 2600 box, which is pretty cool. It was at the Oregon Convention Center, as you can see, 12th Animal, 12th Annual, not 12th Animal, um, October 20th through the 22nd, 2017. Just a cool little, you know, uh, it's it's a pretty cool badge, that's all I can say. Alright, the next thing is uh, something pretty cool, it's not something you can buy anywhere really, unless you go to eBay, um, but it is a Sonic Mania manual. And so this is something I missed out on during PAX, PAX West 2017. Uh, during that convention, they were handing out these manuals for free if you demoed Sonic Forces, which is Sega's new Sonic game. Um, I was stood in line. I demoed the game, and as soon as I finished, I went to go get the manual, and as soon as I tried to do that, the girl that was managing the booth handed out the last one. So uh, I stood in line, I demoed the game, which was great, but I was really hoping to get this manual, and you know, it was just, it slipped right through my fingers. Uh, but thankfully, my buddy Stilo 9 you can check out his channel, I'll leave a link in the description below, but thankfully he heard that I was looking for this this uh, this manual here, and he was so nice enough, he gifted it to me. Um, it's always a pleasure to, to meet up with him, he always has the best deals. He was a vendor there as well, so if you ever make it down to Portland Retro Gaming Expo, I definitely highly, highly recommend uh, checking out CeeLo 9 Alright, and the next thing, I guess, I guess there's a lot more things that I picked up at Portland Retro Gaming Expo than I thought. But either way, this is uh, Haunted Halloween. 85 and so this is made by Retrotainment Games. It is a homebrew. Uh, it's kind of like a Like a River City Ransom slash Mighty Final Fight uh, Beat em up that has Halloween themes. This is for PC uh, This has a code on the back. I'm not gonna show it show it to you yet because I haven't redeemed it um, But it's just a beat em up. It's a homebrew game with zombies you fight them uh, This was gifted to me by Castlemania Games himself um, we were talking, you know, about this game, how cool it was, and I have been wanting to play more horror games and like Halloween themed games because uh, we're around, you know, Halloween, you know, it's October. But either way, he he saw this and he decided to get one for himself as well as one for me. And you know, I, I didn't expect it, but it's very cool of him to pick it up for me so I can give it a try. Uh, but yeah, this this came from Retrotainment Games. It's called Haunted Halloween '85. And this was gifted to me by Castlemania Games, so thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to be giving this a try pretty soon. Just a small break, aside from all the crazy pickups and all the great pickups, uh, I did meet tons of great people. So I met uh, a bunch of people on Instagram, as well as uh, people that you know do join my stream or on Twitch or on YouTube. Uh, so it was a lot of fun meeting all those people. Um, but the cool thing is, I met great YouTube channel and Instagrammer, Nintendo Story, and... Uh, he and I swapped swapped some stickers, which was pretty fun. Uh, if you haven't heard of this channel, this channel is fantastic. Uh, what he does is he takes submissions from from people about Nintendo, uh, you know, your stories or your memories, and he narrates them. And he does so in a way, and he edits the video in such a way that it makes the story even more interesting, more compelling, and uh, just a lot of fun. So. Nintendo Story, really cool dude. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description below. There's gonna be a lot of links down there. Uh, but yeah, I finally met him. I, I'm a fan of his channel, and we exchanged some stickers, um, and we were able to build a, a smaller relationship. 
in a small little friendship and uh you know it's it's just great you know this is why expos and conventions like this are so great because we're able to meet the people that we see on the internet uh you know instead of seeing their profile pictures and their names we're able to connect and actually network and and help each other out all right we have one more trade that i want to show you i almost forgot about it that's just because i left it um away from the other pickups because this is a little bit bigger uh this is from my buddy Cheshire Don. He brought it to Portland to trade with me. It is a couple Pico games. So Sega Pico. We have uh, Sesame Street Alphabet Avenue and Richard Scary's Huckle and Lowly's Busiest Day Ever. That's pretty cool. And these go to this guy here. This is a Sega Pico, which is very cool. Um, those cartridges that I showed you are kind of like storybooks. And they have different pages with different levels and different activities. And this is dun, 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 kind of like an interactive tablet. Um, you plug this in with you know your power adapter and you plug it into your TV. The cartridge goes right into here. So there's a cartridge slot right there. To put one of these in there, slides right in. And as you open up the pages, you'll see there's different things uh, on the screen. You'll see this exact image, but it'll be animated and it'll have graphics and things you can interact with. Um, but yeah, you have a stylus and some buttons and you just essentially use this to interact with what you see on screen. It's, it's a learning tool. It's a learning system, um, but you don't see it too often. It's very novel. It's very cool. Uh, you know, I used to see it in my old orthodontist office. Uh, way back in the day, but I never thought I would own one. Um, but it's very cool. Again, props to my buddy Cheshire Don for bringing this all the way to Portland Retro Gaming Expo to trade to me. And uh, and yeah, this is this is very cool. All right, and so the last pickup from Portland Retro Gaming Expo. It's a bit of a doozy. Uh, so I'm part of Portland Retro Gamers on Facebook. It's a group. And before the the expo actually started, maybe a week before it started. I just made a post saying, hey, what are you guys looking for? This is what I'll be looking for and what I'm hoping to find there. And uh, I drew out a list, you know, there's a list of, you know, seven or so games, but more or less harder to find. So I didn't expect to find any. Uh, but one of the members, a new friend of mine, this is my first time meeting him, but he was kind enough to notice and actually brought the most values, valuable slash most rare game that I was looking for. Uh, he brought it directly to me. He found me and was like, hey, I saw your post, I have the game here, I was wondering if you're interested in making a deal with me. That game is Akuma Joe, Dracula X, Rondo of Blood. And this is a Castlevania Dracula X, Rondo of Blood. This is the original release for the PC Engine in Japan. This is the quote unquote definitive way of playing it. But this game is really hard to find, it's really pricey but it's in solid shape, you know, with the exception of like this, this part here, the spine is supposed to be super white. Um, that can be fixed with a little bit of retro bright, which I plan on doing. But overall, this, this game here, I never thought that I would own. Uh, so it's a lot of fun. I, I own the repro made by PC Engine Memories, but I never thought I'd own the legit copy. And he really gave me a great deal on this. Um, more or less, I really appreciate the gesture more than anything um, you know he went out of his way to bring the game directly to me um, offer it to me first give me dibs essentially and so it was quite the pleasure to, to meet with him interact with him and buy this game off of him um, but yeah this this is unreal like this is one of my grail games and I cannot wait to play it now I just have to track down a uh, TurboGrafx CD which is not region locked so I can play this game on it or like a Turbo Duo or even a PC Engine CD. I don't know. That's going to be another rabbit hole to jump down into and, and drop more money on. But I finally have the game. Now I just need to find the system and uh, play this game. Because Dracula X on Super Nintendo is one of my favorites. And that's supposed to be like a worse version of this game. And those were all my pickups for Portland Retro Gaming Expo. But that doesn't mean it's all the pickups for this week. When I got home, there was actually a few packages waiting for me and uh, we have a few more pickups for you to see. And those packages contained Amiibo. We have Tiki and Krom from the Fire Emblem series. And these Amiibo are to be used with Fire Emblem Warriors, which came out just recently. 
And speaking of Fire Emblem Warriors, we have the Fire Emblem Warriors Special Edition for Nintendo Switch. And this comes with the game. This comes with a Warriors card set. Comes with a poster and a CD set. Um, now I purchased this mostly because of the CD set. I'm a huge fan of soundtracks and the Fire Emblem soundtrack is no exception. Um, excellent soundtrack. I cannot wait to pop it in and give it a try. I was a huge fan of Hyrule Warriors. It was a lot of fun and uh, I cannot wait to see how uh, you know the, the Fire Emblem themes and the universe translate into the Dynasty Warriors universe. Um, if you haven't heard about this game, it's essentially Dynasty Warriors. It's a crazy beat-em-up game, you know, strategy beat-em-up game uh, in a 3D open world and you play your favorite Fire Emblem characters running around defeating forces using your special moves and attacks and weapons. Um, you know, it's just, it's a lot of fun, you know, for all ages, you know, even though you have teen and adolescence on here, so if you're younger than that, I don't know about that. Um, but yeah, this is going to be a super fun game to play. I uh, cannot wait to dig into it, just like I did with Hyrule Warriors when that came out. And uh, hopefully, you know, I enjoy this one uh, just as much. All right, the very last pickup of this week came from Value Village, a thrift store. So this is the first thrift store find of this week. And uh, this came the day after we got back from Portland. Uh, we were super tired. We didn't think we'd want to spend any money, but we were in the neighborhood of a Value Village store. We walked in. Uh, went through the entire store without finding anything until we found one thing in the toy section. Now we saw a bag hanging uh, in the toy section and there was like a high Q game which is kind of a board game um, but there was also this in it. This is Blackjack and this is um, oh I was holding it upside down this is Blackjack and this is a boxed Nintendo Game & Watch. You can see there and the box is in awesome shape. This came out in 1985. So this these came out, um, you know, earlier than the Nintendo NES in the US. Uh, and as you can see, the box is in, in pretty good shape for something from 1985. And if you think the box is in good shape, open it up. It's still got the side tabs. And everything else is in pretty awesome shape too. I mean, it, it's missing some of the inserts, but it's got the, the instruction booklet as well as this uh, battery, you know, instructions. Um, it's got the styrofoam, which is 100% intact. There's no cracks. There's no um, pieces missing or anything. And then we have the Blackjack multi-screen Game & Watch. And as you can see there, you know, there's a few scuffs and a few scratches, but overall it's in solid shape. You can even see the reflection in it. Look at the back, you have the battery cover, which tends to be missing a lot. And when we open this thing up, uh, looking at it on the inside, awesome shape. Look at that. That's fantastic. I only have one other Game & Watch, and that's the Mario Bros. one. That's also a dual screen one. Um, but I don't come across these too often because they tend to be pricey per unit. And uh, I don't know, this, this is really cool. I've never found one in a thrift store before. Uh, I don't know if it works just yet. Um, I haven't even checked oh, and the batteries are in there. Wow. Okay. I don't know. I'll, I'll get some new batteries in it. I'll figure out how to work it out. Read the instruction manuals and um, yeah, this is, this is super cool here. And those were all my pickups for this week. It's, it's been quite the week of pickups, you know, lots of great things, lots of rare things, lots of, in, I don't know, things that I never thought that I'd own, um, as well as modern things. So it's, uh, it's been a good one. If you did like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Please check out some of my other videos. Got some other pickups, tips and tricks, gameplay, streams, and all that fun stuff. And don't forget to check out all the cool people that I mentioned in this video down below in the links. Again, big thanks to Castlemania Games who gave me the opportunity to be a vendor at Portland Retro Gaming Expo 2017. And I really look forward to going to the, the next sub subsequent years. Um, it's going to be a regular thing for me now. So, uh, if you ever manage to make it out there, um, just get in contact with me. I always have stickers to hand out, uh, and I always have a blast just meeting people. So, yeah, look out for me. And with that being said, we'll see you guys on the next one.